We are talking exercise at a really fast pace. It's called Sprint, and I recently talked to the principal investigator about this high intensity research. The flight study that I am in charge of right now is called the Sprint study, and we call it Sprint because the goal of the study is to evaluate higher intensity exercise programs for the protection of cardiovascular muscle and bone health on long duration space flight. So how do we do that? Well, we do the, what we're testing, that's what we want to find out is how do we do that. What we're testing is a unique way to combine aerobic exercise, which is cycle and treadmill exercise, with resistance exercise or weightlifting. So we have the crew members exercising six days a week on either the, the T2, which is the treadmill, or the SEVIS, the cycle, and at least three of those days a week they do high intensity intervals. So that's where you work at a really high intensity, but for a very short time, because you couldn't do that for a very long time. Right. Um, so that's as opposed to going two hours at a slow speed or something like that. So short, high intensity sprint exercises. You really are sprinting. Really are sprinting, and you really can sprint in space. Wow. And then alternate days, they're doing A-RED workouts with uh, high loads and lower repetitions for the, the weightlifting portion. So what can we learn by, by doing this type of research in a faster way? Yeah, so what we're trying, we have two goals. The, the, the number one goal is to improve the efficacy of the exercise countermeasures. So we have new, ex relatively new exercise hardware with A-RED and T2. They were launched in about 2009-ish. And for the first time, we have exercise equipment on station that allows for high intensity exercise. So the treadmill can go fast. The A-RED, you can lift loads up to 600 pounds. And so now we're really using the station to try to get a handle on how do we best use this equipment. We already know just the mere presence of the equipment the crew are doing better, but we want to go from good to great with how specifically do you use this equipment for higher intensity exercise. The other thing that we want to figure out for very long duration exploration missions is what do we really need in our exercise hardware? So to help develop what do the crew members need to do to maintain their cardiovascular muscle and bone health so that we can also inform requirements for hardware for next generation equipment and get the most efficient exercise program. Would this have any effects on the equipment we use here on Earth? Could it, could it help with, uh, could it help me get through a, a sprint session or a spinning session? Well, yes, one way uh, is that high intensity exercise programs are getting very popular on Earth with CrossFit and a lot of these programs that are out there and very popular. Um, the other thing is efficiency of exercise. Everyone wants a quicker exercise program that they can squeeze in during their lunch hour or when they're busy. And so the high intensity intervals may be a good a good route to go there. One of our exercise protocols in the study is only 30 seconds of exercise, 15 seconds of rest, repeated eight times. So it's about a 15 minute workout. That's my kind and of workout. It's really hard though. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a hard kind of 15 minutes, but it's very efficient use of your time. Um, we have a sister study to Sprint that is a similar exercise program in bed rest. And we're doing that at the UTMB in Galveston. And that, we can enroll subjects far faster. So we hope to be able to apply some of the results we learned from that here in the next year or so into the help inform the flight study. And we've already seen some preliminary results from our bed rest and our flight study that um, make us very optimistic that th this will be a good exercise program. And, and someone who knows all too well about staying fit in space is astronaut T.J. Creamer. You spent a little time on the space station. Tell us about the exercises that you did while you were in space. Well, it, it, exercise is very important to us, uh, just from a relief standpoint. Um, and we have several available. Cardio-wise, we're doing uh, running on a treadmill, we're bicycling on a stationary bicycle, and we're also weightlifting and weightlessness, too. Is it really two hours a day, though? <laughs> it, two hours of the day is, is pretty fair when you put together about a 30 to 45 minute run and a clean up from that, and then you're going to do your weightlifting, and that takes a while. So, yeah, two hours is about right. 
Uh, describe how you adjusted physically once you returned from space. The adjustment goes through several phases. It's about a month per month on orbit total recovery. So we landed in June. I was competing in tennis in December, and it felt pretty good then. But in the first couple of weeks, your inner ear, your vestibular system is all screwed up. Uh, it's been turned off, basically. And so coming back to the gravity environment, your inner ear gets a little confused, and that takes a while to get over. So is that what keeps you motivated to, to do all this exercising in space? Uh, two things, really. Um, for normal, natural, healthy recovery, the fitter you are, the better you're going to have a chance. And you get to recover faster and be stronger. But really, if you have an emergency descent where you have to leave station in a hurry, you want to be as fit as possible because you're going to land someplace in the world, not necessarily planned. <laughs> so you want to be as uh, fit for survival and, and recovery. So what do you think about this new sprint study that we heard about? I think it's wonderful to maximize the protocol. What I'm trying to say is if we are already exercising two hours a day, but we can do it less and still get the same benefits or more, super. That, that's, that's a wonderful idea. Did you have any favorite exercises that you did? Um, I enjoyed the weightlifting quite a, quite a bit. Um, the exercise program is very good. I set a, a record uh, at JSC for the leg press. When I came back, I reset it. So that's really a testament to, to the exercise program quality in itself. But for the, uh, the cardio stuff, the running and bicycling, that's the time you get to watch a movie. All right. That, that's my kind of exercise right there. What, what is your favorite sport on earth, though? Oh, it's, it's pretty well known, I think, for, <laughs> for our community. I, I'm a big tennis buff. That's right. Well. I'll take you on in some sets a little Deal. later. Well, let's, right now, before we leave TJ, let's go back and see and take a live look in the Payload Operations Integration Center where TJ spends a lot of his time now as a Payload Operations Director. TJ, you've just come off console. What's, what's going on this week? Well, several things, of course. We have uh, three crew members up on board right now, and Chris Cassidy is working in the U.S. segment. Uh, today, today's Wednesday, we'll be working with the spheres, those floating satellites that are cool. trying, to, trying to fly a formation, and that's the big focus in the moment. All right. Well, as we said, they're in a backup room right now. They will be back in their flight control room in less than a month, maybe, getting some upgrades. So that'll do it from us here at Marshall Space Flight Center. Thank you, TJ. My pleasure.